So thank you so much for having me to you today. Is it right up high to your book? Yeah. This is such an important event. We're here, friends as women, reflecting of what happened in 1918 when women in this country fought their campaign that won them the right to vote. They said deeds and not words. And here I'm surrounded by incredible women who have put that into action and have, haven't just said no to fracking. They have put their bodies where their beliefs are. They have stood against Quadrilla and they have really turned that deeds not words into action. <laughs> and 100 years later, you're, we're still here on the front line of justice being campaigns in society, a demand that often falls upon women in this country. It, so often, people belittle us. So often, people try and ignore us. But they're not going to be able to ignore these amazing women who are here today, because they simply cannot ignore such an important message that's going to affect the lives of so many. The fracking, the climate change, that the environment, that the power of unaccountable corporations in this country are all feminist issues. Because make no mistake, fracking is a feminist issue because fracking does what does to women does to men does to women more. We have been seen uh, an increase in the levels of breast cancer as in areas of fracking and it's caused reproductive harm to women. And on top of that, it's poisoning our water supply, it's causing earthquakes. I don't even need, this is the wrong audience for me to say, imagine earthquakes in Lancashire. There's so many of you here have. We've already done that. <laughs> and this, how can this government so brazenly support this measure? Because of course they haven't been brazen. They've tried to sneak it in. And it's because of people like you and reasonable people that are campaigning Sorry, I printed this quite big. Uh, that are actually on the front line of stopping this fracking disaster of our climate. Rather than looking for a clean alternative, rather than looking for a smart alternative to oil, fracking is just the latest attempt by a fossil fuel industry to make millions at the expense of our planet and our local communities. The methane and the ethane gases released by shale gas exploration combined with its carbon emissions, poison our atmosphere and contribute to climate change. Ethane, for example, can remain in the air for two months. It travels around the world. It means the effects of fracking in this country will be felt in countries all around this planet. That means but what we do here today, I actually remember talking to someone who I believe had been arrested in uh, a Preston New Road, and they said that they were from Blackpool, and the police said, oh, so this issue directly affects you then? And this woman stood up and said, no, it affects everyone, and that's why we're here. It doesn't just affect our local community, it doesn't just affect the UK, it affects the world. It leads to worsening effects of climate change in countries that are, uh, are going to already receive the worst effects, but on top of that, as we know, it's women in the developing world that are going to receive the worst of these impacts of flooding, of increased temperatures, of all the climate chaos that's going to get created by climate change. And we'll be bearing off the brunt. It's our sisters who will be punished for this recklessness. It's the recklessness of greedy corporations and spineless politicians here in the UK. And that's why, as feminists, we must oppose every inch they try to take on their fracking agenda. They are trying to normalise fracking in this country, not just in our communities, but across countless other places in the UK. Not just for British women, but for every woman on this work, we must stand against this creeping, cracking agenda that this government is pushing. We must push for clean energy and an opportunity to make sure that women's voices, like the hundred women here today, are heard by this government, are heard by this country, and are recognised for their concerns 
And until that point, we will continue to take to make sure that we will have make deeds and not just words. So I believe we're now going to um, walk around uh, Parliament Square.